Welcome to the Rebel Love Show, where we are a once-a-week broadcast from Manchester, New Hampshire, where we are pro-pot, pro-gun, and pro-coffee. You can find, We are uh, broadcasting live now on LRN.FM. We're also on IPM, Voluntary Virtues, and go uh, subscribe to us on Stitcher and uh, iTunes. I am Ron Mathias. And I am Shire Dude. And today our guests are the... Uh, the resident experts on Bitcoin in Manch, Neil Cash Radio, Darren and JJ. Thank hey, you, how's it yeah, <laughs> yeah, excellent. We're like in sync. Yeah, yeah, that's beautiful. All right, kids. Uh, so, Neil Cash, what's the elevator pitch for it? Why should all the the youngins go? Well, right now, it? everybody should go to neocashradio.com because they can learn all they can learn about all the cryptocurrency. What we we do, we're not just about Bitcoin. We're more of an economics-focused uh, and finance type of podcast. It's half an hour, and we discuss recent events, what's happened uh, recently, and we do uh, consider some of the uh, effects of that on crypto. Uh, last show, we talked a little bit about how in Uber in uh, sh- Chicago is uh, taking away business from the cab drivers, and we talked about the... Uh, strange uh, solution that the cab drivers thought of to, uh, to because they weren't getting enough business, and that was to strike. Yeah. So uh, we we t- so uh, that kind of related to some of the other things we're talking about because uh, it, it seems like a lot of things that will happen in the future will be more decentralized. Now Uber's not a hundred percent decentralized, but it's it's a little bit more than the than the the, uh, the taxi authority of Chicago. Well, yeah, absolutely. So, it's so. a better business model. You so know? Uh, Darren Darren brings a lot of math to the show. He is a math dude, and so we do a lot of uh, stuff we talk about, and we look at the math. Darren, well, Darren will do some of the math, and yeah. we'll talk about that, but we'll also talk about in-depth concepts. You yeah. know, and it's not, you know, it's not crypto anarchy. It's not um, uh, politically driven. Okay, there's no like, you know, we're using this as a vehicle for activism or something. No, we're using this as a vehicle for logical salt involving finances and economics. You know, that's that's all. We're just looking at data and we're doing the math or the comparison or the, you know, whatever mind part of that. And then we're coming up and we're saying this is what we see happening. Now, we're not giving you advice to buy or sell. Yep. We never that's give you thing. advice. Why not? Because we don't really want to give people advice and then they come back and say you're dead, 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 dead. And so we don't want no to it's not that kind of show it's we don't speculate uh-huh. we don't speculate on finances we only look at what's happened and compare it to where it's come from and say well it's gone up or it's gone down this is the this is the information we have now you can you know use your own judgment and your own you know uh you know your own thoughts and make your own decision that's on you so so yeah i mean you say it's not an activist show uh or it's not like expressly like libertarian or anything like that but um would you say what do you think about people who say that bitcoin is inherently anarchistic i i mean it, i think that's that's placing too strong of an idea on a on a currency i mean on, in a, on a method of exchange bitcoin is software mm-hmm. we can say that with scientifically you know we can say bitcoin is software bitcoin is decentralized bitcoin is uh, of the user by the user for the user right but that doesn't speak to the political thing. I, I think that's that's how a human would interpret that. But I don't think it should have that title. I don't think it should be associated or thought of like that just because you're complicating a very simple matter. You know, let's strike the root. The, what is the root? Bitcoin is, is a the most efficient method of moving money from one person to another uh, across the Internet. Okay. So you don't think any anarchist views to it at all? It's just a straight up currency. No, I, I think anarchists can view it as a the proper tool, right? Mm-hmm. But <clears throat> different people are going to have different viewpoints, and you have to express several of those viewpoints if you want to be you, uh, searching for the truth. Now I know you guys are into multiple different uh, <clears throat> cryptocurrencies. It's not all just uh, straight up Bitcoin. Um, what do you guys normally trade in? Well, we bought. I had bought some Doge at some point, and I'm, I'm holding on to those. Um, a lot of ferns, actually. You know? Yeah. I mean, and you the, gotta you gotta go to the bars or wherever you're gonna go for food. Most of the time, you're paying with cash. Yeah. Um, I personally don't don't do a whole lot of trading, but uh, I've, I have basically just Bitcoin and Doge. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so Doge was was you, really fun. Did you know that there was a you missed it? There was a Doge fest. 
uh, yeah. that, that took over Porkfest. I, I saw it on Shire Dude's <laughs> channel, right? Yeah, yeah. Dogefest is a great... Uh, it, look that up on YouTube. Uh, Dogefest 2 is coming up, too. That's oh, great. Really? That's in great. place of the next Porkfest, so that's yeah. going to be excellent. So soon people won't even confer to it as uh, Porkfest. It's just straight up Dogefest. It'll just be the next Dogefest. <laughs> Well, yeah. Porkfest is, is really beautiful because it has, you know, before Bitcoin was out, it was still an alternative currency festival. You would still go there and buy stuff with gold or silver or yeah. barter. So when Bitcoin came along, it was just one more medium. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know, and then Doge, the same thing, and Litecoin, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, so how did, uh, <clears throat> let's go to the origin. How did Neocash, like, start? Because you guys are kind of up on a milestone. You're, you're a few weeks from now, you'll be at 100, right? That's right. Yeah. Wow. So how, how did this all, because you guys, it's all every week, so you've been doing it for a long time. How did the, the show start? What's the origin of it? Who came up with it? JJ. Yeah, I, I, I was, we were sitting in the, the uh, club, and we were having a lot of discussions about Bitcoin, like, every day. Every day was multiple discussions on Bitcoin, and <clears throat> basically, I started a group. I said, who wants to join? <clears throat> Excuse me. And Darren was one of those people. Yeah. So then JJ came up to me and he said, "Hey, do you want to be on a podcast?" And I was like, "Okay." And and uh, we we've been doing it every Sunday since. And uh, so yeah. Right. So I was, you know, I sort of was looking to my experience doing TV and video, and well, just doing simple radio is is easy. You don't have the video aspect. Mm -hmm. It's very one dimensional, and it doesn't require as much time, you know, resources and such. So. But yeah, and then Darren was like the logical decision. Um, but I, I also appreciate Darren because he has a very positive attitude, mm -hmm. and I think that's a, that's a really healthy thing to have. How, how long were you guys into Bitcoin before you started the show? Oh, I, I got into it around 2011, <coughs> so maybe a year before the show. Or Whenever those Cassatius coins came out. Oh wow, oh, that that's old school. That's, yeah, I was I was uh, right next door to uh, Free Talk Live. And so they came out, and he was giving them out to the co-hosts, um, sort of a thank you, whatnot. And so they came through our local economy. What was the value of those? It was about five to time. seven dollars. Five to seven dollars. Yeah, I remember uh, buying a euro from Mandrick for uh, with it. Oh. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what I did. How much one of those worth now? Oh, I mean, because they're misspelled. That was the alpha batch. Uh huh. And I mean, I've heard of them selling for as much as, as uh, twenty five hundred dollars. Wow! <laughs> so that's that's. But crazy. for me, it was just you know, it's something I could use to buy something. And you know, being a person, you know, I talk about um, personally. I I am an anarchist, so you know, personally, I do talk about um, going through and, and using alternatives in the economy and and doing that yourself. I mean, you are the person who's going to make the change. And if you're not doing it, but you're just talking about it, then you're not exactly helping. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, everyone, I anyone can, can philosoph, uh, you know, philosophize about whatever ideas and stuff. But going out and actually doing that and making them happen, you know, that's that's something else. That's the other foot, you know. Well, I mean, one reason why I love <laughs> Bitcoin is the simple fact that for me, I want to walk the walk as much as I can, and if it's a something that I can do personally in my day to day life that I could use, that's not their money, not working, not using their system of currency completely operating out of it even if there's not that many people who use it but just enough that you know i can get uh, someone else to jump on board another person another person um to me that's more that i actually have something i can fight the fed with something i can you know fight their monetary system with that i can do personally and i can use it online i mean that's my biggest selling point for bitcoin i, I totally you know and and you know you walk to walk but it, it, really honestly you're you're living in a system that's will point guns at you at the first chance they can if you step on a line. I'm all aware of that. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like, there's, you know, I, we'd love to do a lot of different things and, and be free, but at the same point, at mitigating risk and mitigating jail time is my yeah. smart. Oh, I hear that. And with that, we'll be right back after this. Welcome 
Welcome back to the Rebel Love Show. And uh, we're going to start up this segment here with some Liberty Forum updates. The Rebel Love Show will be recording live at Liberty Forum this March 6th through the 8th, right? 5th through the 8th. 5th through the 8th. I keep forgetting the dates. Yeah, all three days we're going to be yeah, recording. Yeah, 6th and 7th. We'll be there at 2.30 in the media room at the uh, Raz in Manchester. Uh, and then also... If you didn't have a reason to get Liberty Forum tickets, now you do because the Rebel Love Show is going to be doing the Liberty Forum party at the Cool That Night on Saturday. The 7th, yeah. It is, I would say, with argument's sake, I would say it's the biggest party bef- uh, of the year besides Pork Fest. Besides obviously. Pork Fest. Yeah. That's the one. That's yeah. the one, folks. Uh, it's going to be crazy. We're actually going to have um, some delicious food there that we're planning. Yes. Do you want to mention that? Yeah, we have mm-hmm. uh, one of, a free stater uh, chef slash uh, caterer slash agorist, I suppose you can say. Uh, he's going to be cooking the menu for that part, which will be for sale there. Uh, make sure you pay for it in Bitcoin because he takes Bitcoin. Um, that and both me and uh, Darren here have we're, we're discuss- we have talks at yeah, Liberty presentations. Well, I'm doing two at Alt Expo, but I mean it's at Liberty Forum. But what, what are you talking about? Well, I'm, I'm going to talk about the, the title is Challenging the Educational Monopoly. And I'm going to talk about uh, basically math education because that's my thing, math, as J.J. was telling you. Um, so I'm going to talk about math education, which I've, I've kind of switched. Usually, well, I, I teach adults mainly at college and uh, have grad classes and things. But I've, I've been also teaching seven-year-olds recently um, some, some math concepts and trying to, and I teach them during, you know, public school hours. So that way I'm only teaching homeschooled, uh, students. And, um, and it, it's been really interesting at what's gone so far. My main goal is to make sure that when they grow up, they don't have any math anxiety. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, I've been doing it for four months and I, I think I'm getting some positive results out of it. Uh, uh we've got four students total, so it's a small sample size. And this is all accurate, right? Um, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not covering <laughs> my, I'm not covering my costs. So, okay. uh, but it, it's the, uh, introduction, like development phase. Yeah. I'm, I'm developing a product right now and, and gotcha. some, some parents are nice enough to uh, I gotta, bring their kids by. Speaking of the, uh, the whole teaching the kids thing, I got to thank you, man, for when you, we did a, it's like this too. And you were on it. Uh huh. Oh my gosh! Uh, and then you were yours was the first episode to be shared by the Ron Paul Facebook page, <laughs> and it blew up. I'm, I don't know how many views it has now, but it it has to be in the thousands. Yeah, that was the that was the one that like really speaked the show up. So. Okay, good, good. That was yeah. that was a good episode. Ron if you Paul haven't seen it yet, your video. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ron Paul. I mean, Ron it, Paul. it's 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 a good <laughs> wholesome topic, you know, teaching math or to rhythm, kids, no rhythm, less. Take to kids, and yeah, it's it's by um, yeah, it's really interesting. One thing I did is I had to do Pascal's triangle, which is like basically you just need to add numbers to to make it. So it's it should be at their level, but there's a lot of deeper meaning to this triangle, and uh, so we did that like a month or two ago, and uh, so the past two times. The the same student said, "Okay, I'm going to do Pascal's triangle just just randomly. Okay, I'm going to do it again. Okay, and 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 um, I don't have to initiate that or anything. Today we were playing compasses, and making circles and things, but it was a lot of fun. Awesome, man. That's sweet. Um, I'm loving the fact that you're at uh, Liberty Forum. Uh, you did a great uh, um, hosting. I remember watching you uh, moderate, uh, not moderate, introduce people at uh, Pork Fest during a comedy thing. Uh huh. But you were great on stage. I'm looking forward to seeing your talk. I really good, am. Good, good, good. Uh, now me, mine's again. I told you during the commercial break. Mine's completely uh, nothing to have anything to do with what you're talking about. Okay. <laughs> um, my first one. I'm doing two talks. They're 20 minute talks, but whatever. Uh, the first one I am doing a talk on secession. Okay. Uh, I did a talk at convention about secession. I'm doing it at Alt Expo now again. Uh, my second one is on polyamory. So that's the two things I'm talking about at Liberty Forum, but education is also So the, could, um, anything specific on secession? Are you going to talk about secession in New Hampshire? Oh, secession of mostly about New Hampshire secession and how I'd like oh. to see New Hampshire secession. Okay. Yeah. And then like bring up uh, probably a few tools that we could use to help speed up secession, like trying to get as many places to accept Bitcoin so you don't have to rely on yeah. the Federal Reserve or like New Hampshire government printing money of some sort you know well i mean we already got the bill that will uh let new hampshire accept bitcoin for taxes 
Yeah. So that, yeah. I think that's going to be huge. I mean, so, even though you might not be a fan of the government and not want it to be paid, well, if they do accept Bitcoin, then when you go to convince a merchant, what can I do with the Bitcoin? Oh, well, you can pay taxes with it. Okay, oh, that, okay. that brings up a, a debate. It wanna, shouldn't, but it, it legitimizes it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Andrew Hemingway ran for governor in right. New Hampshire and ran on the idea of putting the government on the blockchain in, in essence. Uh, he, okay. he, he kind of ran on blockchain uh, technology for the government, not just accept, not just the government using Bitcoin, but literally incorporating some sort of ledger, a blockchain, uh, from on a government form. Well, it, an open government would be a better form of government, right? But I don't. But do we want a? Well, I don't want a he, better where's, form of government. Where's the white paper? I don't paper? want it to be more efficient. Well, this, I want it to not exist. Well, just have him show you the white paper you wrote on it. That would be quite an undertaking. And right. Uh huh. And um, you, there, like, there's a lot of things that had to be thought out to get Bitcoin to run as well as it has. And if you haven't thought those things out ahead of time, then uh, I would be hesitant to implement it. So I don't know exactly what he wants well, to I do. Well, I think it's more theoretical government. than it was. Like, Is it like operational, metaphorically, like sort of metaphorical or? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, was he actually no. saying he's going to have a blockchain? No, I don't think he's saying that he has the technology that exists on that, but like to somehow develop something based off of a blockchain ledger. Okay. Well, I mean, it, you probably could do voting uh, on a blockchain, right. which would be fine. Uh, yeah, um, the problem that we have now is like every voting system possible can be rigged somehow. So yeah. uh, decentralizing that and making it so you can't like – you know, make two votes instead, that, digital scarcity, right? Yeah, that would that that'd be pretty good. Uh, you could have a, a blockchain where you do the voting, and then you could have the state rep be able to vote even remotely. You could probably even have people attend the state house remotely. That would be great. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, there's a lot of people that probably could run but can't make it to Concord t two or three days a week. So, yeah. uh, I, I, I mean, there if are I, some... If I didn't have to sit in Concord all that time... I'd run. Okay. If I can do it from my smartphone while I'm at work, <laughs> like on my lunch break, like say no, no, no to this bill, no to this bill, no to this bill, and then like put my phone down. Yeah. You get elected and you just get to download the state house app. <laughs> you would miss out on all that pageantry. And, and then you, stuff. you oh, right. And then you yeah. generate your own public key or your own address and you give that to the legislature and and then that's your voting address or whatever. That's yeah. How work. I mean. I could see how some technology could be brought in there, but uh, yeah. So, but anyway. So. Well, what are you guys thinking? Are you okay with like governments using uh, like some sort of blockchain technology or Bitcoin? Generally? Governments exist. They well, already obviously. exist right now. So I'd rather them exist and use Bitcoin than exist and not use Bitcoin. Then uh, yeah, I'd prefer it to the Federal Reserve note. I mean, they, you they you just have the option. Yeah. That's all this bill would do. I mean, if they're if they're going to use one rule one note to rule us all, then I'd rather it be a Bitcoin. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Just saying, because then we can actually see what's going on. You know, there's no creating nothing. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm against uh, governments using Bitcoin, but we'll come back to that after this. the rebel love show and uh, we're talking about bitcoin in the last segment and kind of want to touch base here with some uh bitcoin activism that has taken place in manchester a local pizza place by call it name of uh pizza 911 manager of that establishment reached out to me all right another person living in manchester but uh manager of a business reaches out to me knowing that I'm into Bitcoin. Like, how do I accept Bitcoin at my you know, restaurant? So I throw them into a group chat. I throw them into a group chat of other people I know in the community that are you know, experts on Bitcoin more than I am. Like big Bitcoin names, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people that run Bitcoin businesses and yeah. stuff like that. You know, uh, the, the ones that are Bitcoin balling in, uh, as they, as Pedro Bitcoin barons? What? The Bitcoin yeah, barons. the Bitcoin barons. Yeah, all the Bitcoin barons and darons. Yeah, darons, darons, same thing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they now accept Bitcoin. 
so it's it's uh it's cool to see a uh another place in manchester except bitcoin i need to get very out. cool and get over yeah. there at some point in fact they delivered and the driver accepted bitcoin was already ready had to wallet out and stuff like that Bam. Like, you know hey yeah you know i'll take a tip in bitcoin like that's that's really cool okay so the first night that pizza 911 was accepting bitcoin uh jared actually the cool beat me to getting like something i think he actually went there in person and paid with bitcoin and then um later that evening i, I wanted to try something from the place because i'd actually never had any food there and uh i wanted to review it and stuff so i got some chicken and i had it delivered here and I tipped the guy in Bitcoin. There's a website. Uh, uh, if you Google printable Bitcoin tips, you should be able to find it. It should be the first one. And I printed a bunch of Bitcoin tips. And so I gave the guy his tip in like it was a piece of paper. But it's like a like a beginner's guide to Bitcoin thing. And Very actually, cool. I got some flack from the uh, from doing that. Why? Somebody said, oh, you're making the guy like like scrounge for crumbs. Like you're making the guy how work the so how hard. How much was the tip? You know, I mean, it was just one item, so like I tipped him like it was like a couple bucks or like three bucks. That's not bad. That's Which, like opening an account on a you know an online wallet. You know, that's mm -hmm. what. How long does that take? Five seconds, ten. Yeah, and then you scan the QR code. Right. The, the two addresses. And yeah, whatnot. like I can't imagine this would be really difficult. And, you know, getting it on your phone. Pretty much everyone has a smartphone nowadays. Well, I mean, you can always take care of, or you can always address that concern by offering the person here's. You know, two Federal Reserve notes or three dollars of Bitcoin. Which oh, one yeah, I like that. I like and that. And then, then they got to choose, and so it's like they get to do what they want to do. And you know, even if they say no to the uh, Bitcoin at first, after getting offered that a few times, maybe they'll start to realize they can make money by accepting the Bitcoin as tips. Well, I know mm -hmm. one of the waiters at Murphy's takes Bitcoin for tips. He hold he has that he has a QR code laminated. Like mm -hmm. he doesn't even yeah. bring out his phone. That's he has pretty it cool. laminated. Like, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. Just pay me in tips on Bitcoin. Yeah. You know. Uh, speaking of. Bitcoin. Are you gonna Operation Gomez? Rob, uh, Rob, we're not talking about that. I already said we're not talking about that. Well, when can we talk about? It? This is a few shows <laughs> in now. I don't, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I want to bring it up every show until you start talking about. It. It's, it's a great idea. It's a great idea. It, it is a good People idea. People need to know about good ideas. It is some some low key activism in, in Manchester that has to do with Bitcoin, oh, it, um, but it's in the, the works right now, so it's not. It's not something that I'm ready to talk about. It's, I'll talk about it when it's successful. It's cooking. Yeah, it's cooking. It's, he's stirring the sows. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I. Anyway. Uh, all right. Well, you need to, you need to bring that up. It's a uh, other other activists around the country and the planets and the when they need it. It's a great. It's great. I know, I know some people yeah. have actually already talked about it on shows before. Have they? So like Derek mentioned it on his on his uh, I think Peace News Now or. It was something. He, he talked about it. It might have been Bitcoin talk show, actually. Did he talk about it, it being your idea? No, no, no. He idea? mentioned it in obscurity, which I appreciate. Okay. Because I, I kind of want to keep this on the down low. I think you could look, look on it in, in a negative light, well, but we, I want to I get the results first and then be able to hold how, this up. How long are you going to be until you have the results? Will you release it regardless if the results are good or bad? Oh man, I don't know. Like if it fail, will you? you if would it you say, if it crashes like, and burns, this, yeah, don't do this activism. Then we could talk bad, about that idea. Uh, oh man, can you can you talk about? Your what do you failures? guys think? Uh, I think no, no, I'm telling you, no, keep that private. Keep it keep your right. <laughs> why why dishearten people? You know, like I I get it. Like people can learn from our mistakes. Like that's a benefit of sharing. Unless it. someone else brings up, hey, I have this idea, and it's the exact same one. And they're like, they're about yeah. to do this. Then go, hey, uh, let me talk to you for a second. Yeah, there once was a guy named Shire dude. <laughs> just like tell him the story. Wah, wah, wah. Right, uh, but I think I think this is going to be successful. Um, I think we're going to see more places in Manchester, in and around Manchester, accepting Bitcoin. Yeah, especially since we have you know managers coming to us now, right? Yeah, people come to us. Yeah, there you go. That'd be pretty cool. Boom. You know, Manchester Bitcoin capital of. Bitcoin, the U.S. or something. It's already home to the lo uh, the world's longest running Bitcoin meetup. That's right. Yeah, Boom. we had a uh, guy from uh, Mycelium there. Uh, that's right. Oh, that's right, Dimitri. Yeah, yeah, he's like skipped out on skiing to come see us. That was nice. Like that's that. cool. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't he drive like eight hours for that meetup? Well, he he drove well, he with his um, he drove with his husband and um, uh, parents or something, maybe his parents in laws, whatever, and uh, they came for like skiing and things. And then he just happened to come by our Bitcoin meetup instead of skiing that night. So it, was, okay. it wasn't just for our meetup. Okay. But the well, meetup that, was, that was, was epic. A, a, one more reason to come up, basically. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. How long has that meetup been going? Well, what are we at? One hundred and twenty now, or I over think it's two more years? Like one hundred and forty something yeah, at this point. Yeah, it's a lot of years. Yeah, that's like the big. That's the like meetup that I've pretty much have gone to almost every week since I moved here. Like, there's other ones I've gone to for a couple of times here and there, but I usually go to at least three out of every four times a month. I'm at that meetup. Oh yeah, I hosted yeah. a few of my own meetups, and I still prefer the Bitcoin meetup yeah, to the anything big, that the I Bitcoin did. Bitcoin meetup is my favorite meetup by far in Manchester. Well, the prices are right too, you know, for the the beverages and food service. Oh yeah, plus that room is like it's a it's a yeah. it has a good flow to it. And then we it. got a good waiter often, almost mm. always. Yeah. Usually, yeah. Last well, time, Matt. last time we dropped the ball. Well, he I think he was just overwhelmed. There's the, you know what? There was like I don't know if you were there this last Sunday. There was like was. three. Waiters and that's it. They were understaffed. Yeah, they were very understaffed. Two, two it's waiters. happened a few times. You see, it's a, it's a relatively good place, and all like the waiters are cool with Bitcoin, but I think like the owner needs to be nudged a little bit more. Yeah, I um, wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about doing anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> the owner is cool enough just as it is. I mean, what was crazy is I remember one time with that meetup during the summer. Was it during the summer or the spring? There was uh, two Bitcoin meetups going on simultaneously. Uh, one uh, strange brew, one at Murphy's, and that lasted for a couple weeks because they kept alternating. Uh, it was fun. It was fun to see like there's enough people to go to both, so there's literally two Bitcoin meetups going on at the same time. Uh-huh. Um, but uh, yeah, that's my favorite meetup by far. Is that Bitcoin meetup more than anything else? I've uh, meetups I'll go to here. It's almost like a well, I, it's consistent. That's yeah. one thing. All the other meetups are inconsistent. You know, they they happen occasionally, and you know. But this one is every Sunday. Yeah. It happens. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I I love that. I really, really so. do. Um, what do you guys think is uh good ways to promote Bitcoin to get more people using it? What do you think it would be more what what's effective or efficient? I don't know. I mean we just we just try to educate people about what Bitcoin yeah. is, but they you know, as far as their own judgment of what currency to use, um, we can we can tout all day long how this is more efficient and easier and more personally secure than using you know credit or especially credit because of the risk of having to pay it back and the interest. Uh, but you know other other forms too. It's a savings based currency. You know that's the difference between Bitcoin and the fiat. Fiat is typically debt based. You know I mean the the, the dollar itself is a debt note. Mm-hmm. It's it's so it's debt based at its very core, but um, Bitcoin forces you to save it up and have it. So that's a different way of spending than most people are used to. Most people have either a debit card or, or their credit card. Yeah. So they're either charging it or they're taking it out of their account. Well, Bitcoin is like taking it out. It's just a debit card. You don't get that credit. Yeah. Makes people actually be responsible. Coming up, uh, we got a question in the chat room uh, to you guys. Oh. This is going to be really interesting, actually. They, they want to see if you know your stuff. Okay. All right. Let's get back. All right. Break. Besides going to Ellerun.fm, you can also go to rebelloveshow.com slash watch where you can watch us live. Uh, you can also interact with the Ellerun chat room on that same page. And we do get listeners in there. And if someone has a Yeah, this guy's chat? got a question. Um, one of the newbies in the chat room, uh, Ellerun newbie MLP, is asking a question of Darren, who's answering it right now. Yeah, with pad and paper. He's in the head, so he's, yeah. some radio magic. We, we asked him the question like right during the break, and he's been going at it on this piece of paper. Anyway, the question is, it says, ask the guest to compute the antiderivative of cosine squared. Just like this random math question. To me, it sounds like gobbledygook. Like, I, I'm really terrible in math. The antiderivative. You can never let it touch the derivative. <laughs> Okay. So otherwise, math will happen. Darren, what's going on in your brain so, right now? So I, I think I've got it right here. Oh my um, gosh. There's a, there's a, um, an identity that you usually use to compute these integrals. So, 
Cosine square X, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, is 1 plus cosine 2X over 2. <laughs> and so when you integrate that, you can do a simple substitution for the cosine part. You get 1 half X um, minus sine of 2X over 4 plus a constant. Can I see your work there? There you go. It's, it's, oh, it's, my gosh. That's what I got. Okay, and I, I, it has been a while since I've had to do something like that. So. We, we call him Dr. Tap for a reason. This is insane. Oh, they're showing the work on the... Dr. Tap. On the... Whatever, the yeah, it's it's way. not in order. So here here's the main thing right here. Plus plus C. Put your plus C on that, and you're good. Oh, there you go. How do we know if this is even correct? I don't. I, well, <laughs> we can take the derivative. See the antiderivative. Uh, you can take the derivative and see if it's if it's right. And uh, oh, there you go. Well, th there's your homework for uh, you the person I, in the chat room. There you go. So <laughs> I hope you're happy, chat room person. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, I, I I I won't do all your homework for you. <laughs> well, if you have any. Right. Other it's yeah, some like it. teenager at home with like a math textbook, and he's like, "Oh right." Yeah, you're not getting a free tutoring service from Darren tonight via the chat room. No, but that was fun. Thank you. All right. Um, so JJ, yes, uh, you want to talk about your new project coming up or what you're working on now? Oh yes, uh, just uh, briefly touch on it. It's it's a brand new idea, and uh, it's called Vibrant Dot Works. You know, works, and it's okay. going to be. A, that's, that's the URL, real that's fast. That's the URL. Well, vibrant dot works. Yes, that's the company name, and well, the company name is Vibrant Works. Okay. And the URL is vibrant dot works. I didn't know works you can get as a a URL. Now. Yes. Wow, isn't that a cool one? Like yeah. the company and name is the URL. Okay. I wonder yes, if we can get exactly. rebel dot show. That'd be really cool. <laughs> if that was actual URL. We'll continue. Yeah, and uh, so basically, it's 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 a for profit business venture with a very talented artist by the name of Bo Davis, and um, Bo and myself are going to build basically a completely completely functional media house. So generate basically any sort of media, video, audio, graphics. Um, press releases, blog posts, PR, everything. And uh, we're also going to uh, recruit the help of contractors. So there's a lot of people in the community that have art skills. And, you know, if we can piece out parts of these jobs to do various parts of it, then uh, great. And then we'll, we'll sort of uh, farm out as much work as possible. It'll come back, meet our quality standards, and then be added to the, uh, the composition. You know, maybe we just need some graphics to put on top of this video or, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and so there's a lot of different uh, aspects to be covered with that. And so it's going to be uh, we have some really big plans. Uh, that's basically what, what I'm going to talk about now. But um, we have a, a very, you know, a model that's a model of growth to be to be followed. So uh, look forward to more. Yeah. Vibrant that works. It's really cool. Like uh, so, coming here, I've gotten a little bit of freelance like video editing work um, thrown to me by various people. But it's it's definitely too sparse and you know too like few and far between to actually live off of in any meaningful way. So I do have a day job too. And so this would like be like the big conglomerate that you could just go to for any like media needs. And I'd be you know I'd be getting a, a chunk of that. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 And it, it, there's a huge talent pool here. There's a lot of artists and, in fact, a lot of programmers, too, because a large part of what we're going to be doing might, will also include mobile apps and mobile gaming and, and mobile uh, and website design as well. So a lot of programming, a lot of coding as well, and we have a large community for that here. And, you know, even if people only work once a month, you know, or one little project a month, whatever it may be, um, if that's what they want. But um, we really hope to to grow this and we already have more work than we can do and we haven't even started selling really so i think we have a great uh company idea already um and we're going to just uh, do what we can to make it successful okay uh how can people reach you in, if they want to like, right now apply uh, or like get in, in contact yeah or look for referrals just uh or? check back at vibrant works this is literally uh yesterday was the day we actually finished building the business model and uh, acquired the website so like this is the startup, this is the ground floor right okay. now. And so now is uh, we're gonna have a uh, email address up at vibrant.works. Um, otherwise my personally, well, I, I'd, I'd rather not give up my personal one right now. Fair enough. Uh, just because it's, it keeps everything separate, you know, as far yeah, as communication yeah. goes. Um, but there should be a website address, uh, an email address there to send anything to clients or um, 
you know, we're doing everything from big budget video documentary and movie production to, um, you know, you just need this video made up for uh, um, a technical discussion, you know, okay. so like everything in between. Nice. So, so that's kind of what we're doing. But otherwise, uh, Neocache, just to get back to that sort of like, this is sort of coming around for this, for this yeah, hour here. Full circle. Yeah. Um, what's, what's new for Neocache? What's on the floor? Well, front? Neocache has been slowly plodding along. Uh, we, we steadily have a, you know, a growth of, of listeners and consistent downloaders, um, but, uh, we're coming up on episode a hundred soon. So we're hoping to do some, some more stuff with that. Mm -hmm. And, and it's go something on, fun. Going to be a, it's going to be a video at some point. It's going to be a YouTube video of the show. I don't know. Or, we we kind of didn't want to do stream. video cause it just simplifies everything, you yeah. know, we just wanted a podcast and just radio and keep it simple. Okay. And, uh, yeah, we've been putting out some bonus content on Wednesday that we what did kind last of, what month. What kind of bonus content does Neo Cash out? Oh, let's see. What's the last I, one? Because you always, if you want a good podcast, you well, have we to had bonus we content. had a discussion about altcoins. So yes. the question was was altcoins Ponzi are on altcoins Ponzi schemes, and we um, we we t discussed that for a little bit, and we came up to um, maybe. I mean, maybe they're Ponzi, maybe they're more pump and dump type things. Um, we've, we've had special com content about, uh, the first crypto war. Uh, we had, uh, um, uh, Kurt who, uh, who, uh, was around during all that and, uh, very knowledgeable about all that. So we, we had him on, he was a special guest during our show. And then he, we had a special, um, content recorded with him. Uh, Bo was on one of our con, uh, you know, was on our Wednesday uh, we interviewed him about 101 Reasons to uh, Liberty Lives in New Hampshire. And, uh, yeah, so we've been putting out some a little bit more content than we have, like, than just once a week. We uh, also, in the show, too, like, recently, I'm quite happy with, we actually talked about what a derivative is. Mm -hmm. And we just explained <laughs> that. And and just, like, so some of our listeners, we use the word and, and we describe things, but they might not actually know what we're talking about. And, and that's a derivative as in a financial derivative, not as a derivative as the uh, person in the... Right. We and, we sort of we sort of explained that and and gave them a little bit of a maybe a refresher if they did know it, but I mean a lot of people just don't know what these terms mean in the financial markets and the, these instruments that people use to move money around really need to be explained in, in really simple terms for some people and that's understandable. I mean you got to learn you got to know about your specialty. Would you say some of your listenership is more uh, um, people entering into the whole? Uh cryptocurrencies or financial like trying to be well, educated I, or are they people that already are educated I, I, and want up to date like information I, i've had somebody contact me over facebook and i think they were still learning uh, a lot about cryptocurrencies um i mean but well, there's there's i've had some you know people contact me and say positive things about it um about our show and uh I, I think it's our, our show is more for people learning about it or and, and things like that but i think we also have a lot of value brought to people that already know about it because like our last show we talked about uh what's happening with the bitcoin foundation elections and all of that a, a, a little bit and uh i think that would appeal to both the people who've been involved for a while and even newcomers that might not know what the bitcoin foundation is should, should it be i for the listeners at home just to, well when we come back for the listeners at home i like to talk about the bitcoin foundation where you guys uh, have a take on that all right And I'm Shire, dude. And we have Darren and JJ of Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. That's right. I love it. That's you our have cash such race. a radio voice, man. Dude, it, yeah, that's the thing. Is like that's what I bring to the radio show. He's got the voice. 
Yeah. You're listening to Neo Cash Radio, where we discuss the future of money today. It, we're interviewing Rob and Shire Dude here in the studios at Rebel Love Show. Darren, what do we have on the top of the story list? Well, on top of the story list is the Bitcoin Foundation. That's right. Yeah, the Bitcoin Foundation just had their election this uh, week, this uh, past week. And, and it was a failure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, let's face Almost. it. Almost. I mean, you, they had everybody register to vote before the thing and the thing is you've already paid you got your dues and stuff so they, so there's people who wanted to vote and couldn't vote because they didn't know they had to do more paperwork basically or electric digital work i guess well what's um, i'm trying to understand the point well of the, the uh, of the whole bitcoin foundation the original point of the bitcoin foundation was to be basically a a uh, focal point that where um, like they could go and send maybe lawyers or or whatever else to to um, government bodies, specifically the U.S., and uh, answer their questions. It'd just be like a, a point of contact for uh, the governing body, basically uh, being a lobbying group. Another original uh, goal that the the Bitcoin Foundation had was to uh, protect the integrity of the code. Uh, it was only after the Bitcoin Foundation started that our f the first full-time coder was hired to work on the, the, the client. I believe that was Gavin Andreessen, and um, so I, I I thought that was I think that's a valuable uh, thing to contribute to our community to the Bitcoin community. So I, I guess I'll tell you I'm a member okay. of the Bitcoin Foundation. Dun dun dun! Whoa, the plot thickens. You didn't expect that one. No, I did not. So, anyway, so <laughs> well, I gave him a little bit of money, and and I'm I want Gavin to be thing, and I I didn't think a, you know I. Okay, so but the whole point of Bitcoin is that it's decentralized. Why do I want a foundation that kind of like feels like a centralization well, of it? But, but it's the thing is that you, you if you don't like it, you start your own, or you don't you don't use it or whatever. You don't need it. Um, uh, but I didn't think lobbying was a, a bad thing. Well, yeah. Here's the thing. Rob and I were talking about this earlier today. Oh, what's the difference between an activist and a lobbyist? Right? Lobbyist gets paid enough to eat dinner. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, doesn't just live off donations. So, so I mean, what's necessary? What's is there anything inherently wrong in being a lobbyist? Well, it depends. Like, if you're lobbying for a, a evil corporation or evil uh, business or entity, uh, yeah, there would be something inherently wrong with being a lobbyist. But if you're you're lobbying on the right side, I don't think there for Bitcoin, right? Which yeah, I don't I don't think it would be inherently wrong. Um, I mean, there's so so there's my uh, I had a couple advisors at Purdue. One advisor was Indian. Okay, my first one was uh, like from India, and so he he, he told this story about a um, um, a religious person and an atheist walking down you know the, a big busy street in Bombay or uh, where whatever they change the name to, and so and so they the um, the they the the atheist and this religious person they walk by a temple. And so the, the, the religious person turns and bows to the temple, you know, it's like it's temple to Ganesh. So he turns and bows to the temple of Ganesh. And the atheist turns and bows to the temple of Ganesh. Okay. And then they go walk down the street a little bit more and they come out to the temple of Vishnu. And so the, um, the uh, religious person turns and bows to the temple of Vishnu. And the, the atheist turns and bows to the temple of Vishnu. And then uh, again, they go up there, and there's another temple to Krishna. And so again, they both bow. By this time, the the religious person is very confused. He's like, "Why do you bow? If you, I thought you were an atheist. Why do you bow?" He's like, "Well, I I am an atheist, but I I bow just in case." That's that's what the <laughs> that's, <laughs> that, that's this story. So um, so if, if you if you treat uh, what people do in politics as a religion. It's like okay, I don't really want to be involved in that religion, but I, I, I throw a little bit of money, or I have thrown a little bit of money in their way just in case. Because what if, what if that was the one way to make it work? Like if you if you, if this little bit of money did it, I would totally want to do that. Um, but um, but I think uh, um, other uh, doing other things as well. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't put all my eggs in one basket. It's it's like investing, right? Isn't there some uh, isn't there some controversy with the Bitcoin Foundation? Well, I, I think they've stopped doing any lobbying, and now they're just focusing on the code. So I think that's a little bit controversial. I think uh, Cody Wilson has drummed up a lot of uh, controversial speech towards the right. foundation. Yeah. Uh, very inflammatory at times, and he's run to dismantle it. Unfortunately, right. he hasn't gotten enough votes to actually 
achieve anything. He can't change it from the inside. Well, why he, is he even running? He only got twenty one percent. Why is he running for office? He only got twenty one percent of the vote. Uh, and you need fifty percent to actually be on the board. No one actually got fifty percent, but the top four uh, vote getters are going to have a runoff. Yeah, and that's not Cody, but. Yeah, it's kind of weird since it's a voluntary organization. He runs and then he wants to dismantle it. But why? Do, why would you even put any time in at all? On this why doesn't he? You know, start his own. It, that's I mean, the I don't thing is he, he doesn't to. want to start his own. But at the same point, I, you know, as Darren said, there's value to hiring someone and paying them money so they can put food on their table. So that and all they do is they look at the code and and see how to make it better and fix. And problems. Gavin Gavin Andreessen's a good guy to do that. And I mean, he kind of founded this thing and made his own salary from that but i mean i say props to him i say i mean he was doing tons of work before he got paid to do it i i don't think anybody should fault him if he figures out how to get the donations so he can get a every user is going to decide whether or not they're going to implement the patch okay they know what code has changed or that they have a release uh you know the patch notes and whatnot this is what's different blah 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 and so each user decides whether or not they're going to implement that. Each miner decides whether or not they're going to implement that. That's why this is completely voluntary. There's no point that what the Bitcoin Foundation is doing is mandatory. And at any point, the entire user base could just say, you know what, we're going to stop using your updates and we're going to use someone else's updates. Right. We're going to hire somebody else. How much does, uh, do uh, those users uh, take in from Bitcoin Foundation? Like how, how, what percentage of like the recommendations or updates that they do that the... Um, the majority of users use or whatnot like what percentage of that is pretty much they haven't i mean they've been the the go-to place for the updates to the qr uh qt code since the the beginning yeah i mean so a majority of the, of the miners and whatnot the they, or the, the yeah. vast the super majority of everybody uh yeah. agrees that this code is good and there is there are some people that do a little custom job like uh, luke jr uh, had some custom software he actually included it in certain distributions and didn't tell anybody which was a little bit uh fraudulent uh or or deceptive not really fraudulent um yeah so so there there are a few people that are doing other things and but nothing that's uh, strong enough to fork the code um that that's i mean I, i'm really looking forward to when they up the mega the the block limit size I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that happens soon or at what, least what would that do well, that would allow the um, network handle to h handle more transactions. So right now, uh, approximately the network can handle seven transactions a second, which is about on the order of PayPal. But uh, credit cards do about 2,000 transactions a second. So um, seven transactions a second, I believe, will not cut it over the long haul uh, for Bitcoin. Uh, okay. um, like if you keep wanting to use Bitcoin to pay for pizza, you're going to need to have bigger blocks so you can fit more transactions in there. Yeah, and not only that, but blocks are being used for other things, and people are storing things in the blockchain. Uh, that too. So your one megabyte uh, block sizes is, is not, you know, yeah. it's, it's nothing to snuff at. You know, I mean, they've done testing on the test net with twenty megabyte block size that that went fine. Uh, I'd say put it up to ten or something, maybe just to, you know pull it back a little bit on the actual main net. What do you where do you see? Uh... Because Bitcoin's kind of been hovering around the same pl uh, place it has for a while now. Like, well, what's I have going on? I have a little bit of perspective on that. Um, so when I first got into Bitcoin, it was around a dollar, and then there was a big clamor, and the price went up to thirty dollars. So maybe I should tell our listeners when we get back what the 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 early times of Bitcoin and and how that might uh, relate to what's going on now. Bitcoin history. When we get back. listening live on LRN, please go to the LRN.FM chat, which is at LRN.FM or rebelloveshow.com slash watch, and you can ask a question of our guests. 
All yeah, right. yeah. Actually, I got another question from the chat room right now, uh, and it's for both of you guys, so you can take turns answering it. Okay. Uh, it's uh, they want to know where to move to with technical Bitcoin skills. So I guess this person has technical Bitcoin skills to make money with Bitcoin star- startups and rake in the digital cash. Like, where's Bitcoin Mecca right now? That's a hard one. For technical, st- I mean, if you're doing software, you can do that from just about anywhere. Right. right. Like, if this is all over the computer. computer. I mean, if, if you're talking about soldering resistors onto boards and, like, you know, like that kind of technical stuff, well, I think, what, Malaysia makes chips? I don't know. ASICs? <laughs> I, you know, it's it's like you could do Bitcoin from pretty much anywhere. If you're talking, you want to be a part of a community uh, that, that really appreciates Bitcoin, well, you're probably going to get a really good community here in, in Manchester area of New Hampshire. Um, but otherwise, um, perhaps the what that, the place in California, Silicon Valley, mm-hmm. maybe there. there. And, yeah, and they're they're really Texas getting into Bitcoin. Yeah, you know that's that's going to get you both and, technical and and I I'm I don't feel like I'm I have enough information to really answer this question. I mean, there's been very interesting videos uh, produced. One was actually produced by IBM about uh, basically they made Bitcoin rain, but uh, th- this was in Brazil. And the language of the video was in Portuguese, so it was, it was very hard, hard for me to uh, assess uh, how big Bitcoin was. So, parent, but IBM, at least certain people that work at IBM, are really excited about Bitcoin. Um, and, and Brazil, you know, they they have had severe, severe problems with their currencies uh, multiple times. So uh, you might you might see Bitcoin adoption spur off or be. Like Bitcoin might be an even better alternative to their fiat currency compared to the U.S. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. basically the remittance enterprise, just sending money from you know the West to uh, impoverished countries or wherever it doesn't even matter. The remittance industry is going to just have a huge boon with Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Um, they're already doing it a lot in money from uh, various parts of China to uh, you know like Vietnam and uh, those. The, the whole that whole area there um and so it's it's happening a lot i think that's gonna be a big thing because the, the western union fees for example are just tremendous Outrageous. compared to um like if you send money from the united states to this location or from like vietnam to another location you're gonna pay a, a drastically different amount and um you know bitcoin is the same no matter where you are or who you are you know, it doesn't really yeah, it doesn't, care. It doesn't recognize borders or no. you know laws regarding uh, transaction fees or whatever. It, right. It's it's just a an internet protocol. No limits either. That's yeah. the other thing. You know, you can only send an X X dollar I mean, amount. I mean, the, the 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 person in the chat room. The thing is, get a good idea and and get a good idea that that will work and will provide goods and services that people want, or maybe will increase the utility of Bitcoin or. Um, Whatever, get a good idea and then do that. Or, I mean, if you d- if you don't want to do that, then your other option is to find somebody that's doing a good idea and join them. So yeah. that's pretty much. And all you, you get can a do. lot of good ideas if you move here to Manch. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, Mar- Manch, uh, Lama Sioux kind of came out of our Bitcoin meetups. Of course, they were, uh, you know, uh, Josh and Zach, their brothers. They kind of started it, so I'm sure they had a lot of conversations. Which we need to get on this show. We have never had them on. Oh, show they were yet. on Neo Cash Radio, or Zach was on Neo Cash Radio. Yeah. Recently, <laughs> recently, recently, yeah, yeah. He's a great guy to get in studio. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely reach out to them. But they're busy traveling a lot. They're yeah. going, you know, they're building their machines, so they have to go to the manufacturer in, in uh, Portugal, I believe. Yeah, and they're, they're having. It seems like they're living it up. From yeah, yeah. Their from their, if you posts. if you follow their Instagram feed, they're like <laughs> li- they're always traveling, eating some like you know high end uh, dinner somewhere yeah. or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. They're they're globe trotting. Yep, yeah. and good they, for them. Yeah, good for them. Uh, I'm glad that a Bitcoin business started up here yeah. and is, you know, international. And, and, and yeah, and, and that's kind of what's happened. They kind of start up here and then they kind of just float everywhere. It's They're everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Well, yeah, that's what Bitcoin really does. Yeah. Speaking of Bitcoin, I don't know about you, but do you guys always feel if whenever you run into a uh, another free stater that doesn't accept Bitcoin or doesn't have a Bitcoin wallet, you know, I almost feel as if they're like how some people don't say like they'll say if some people are not a good anarchist or what. Well, I just it just is confusing to me. It's like what? Okay, um, all right. 
Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it, it's, mean, almost, it's like it's it's not 2009, 2010 And then they anymore. start bringing up some argument. I'm like, well, I just used it and it worked, and I, I don't know why you need to argue with it. But I just like to use it. I mean, well, I it goes know. to show that Bitcoin isn't isn't going to be the perfect solution for everybody. You know, there are people that just aren't going to be well, comfortable. There are people who aren't comfortable using any plastic. They only I, use cash. I'm gen- you know? I'm generally well. I, I don't I don't bank. Personally, I don't use a credit card. Okay. I refuse. Well, yeah. good for you. But... It's hard sometimes, but I try to walk that walk. Well, I, I generally am a late adopter on things in general. Like, you know, when there's like cell phones, I don't want to be the first one to do it, especially some of this technology that might ha- involve putting technology interface with uh with our biology oh yeah i do not want to be the first yeah, person so you're, to do. you're completely against trend no trend i am not against it i do you not want to be the first he's one. not gonna I be do, the hamster i do <laughs> not want to be the you do it wait a couple years tell me what you think about it and then maybe it's not against it it's just mm. i'm against it on me right now okay so anyway. you, you don't want to be the one to try out something new first. no no and and so i'm usually a late adopter on things and so i imagine there could be people that are still kind of late adopters isn't there any tech you're like really looking forward to like you couldn't wait to be you know one of the next wave of people you got to be the first wave Is no there, i don't there's nothing no. you could think of no not really no wow i've seen too many things come out and then the trouble price. and failure and uh patching this <laughs> and, oh, <laughs> we got to update the firmware oh my god i'm so sorry recall like, or even if it works and it's great, the price is like a third, you know, three months true. later. That's so true, just, yeah. yeah so. The price gets more realistic yeah. after a while. I mean, yeah, and then you don't have to wait in line. I mean, come on. Oh, Soylent. Uh, <laughs> I waited for like, I don't know, six months, and then uh, I just yeah, ended you up never, canceling my order. Cause yeah, you never went full Soylent. No. I was about to. I was about to try to go like on Soylent full time. And there's another one coming out, too. Um, it's like a special mattress. And it's like it like regulates your you body temperature it? throughout the evening. I don't think you can mm. eat it. You could try to eat it though. <laughs> oh, uh, okay. I'm sure an early adopter will try that eventually. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. Like it like regulates your like body temperature, and then like it wakes you up with temperature in the morning. So you like you wake up, and and then it can like communicate with your other devices. So if you have like a Wi-Fi coffee oh. machine, the second you get out of bed, coffee is ready. Oh, I really want to get one of those Wi-Fi coffee machines. I want to be able to hit a button on my smartphone. That's pretty cool. When I wake up in the morning, and when I hit my turn my alarm off, hit a button so the time I get out of bed and get up, like my coffee's already brewed in the kitchen. I don't know. They there make that. I See, mean, I'm, I'm pretty. You could just have an alarm clock one and just get up. With the, you could the just alarm go cool, man. I want no, to it's not cool. Wire, like from my phone wirelessly. I don't want to all set up an alarm clock because sometimes I hit snooze way too much. But we'll be right. coming back after this. Radio to OG Freestaters, <laughs> and uh, OG. you guys are OG. O- I mean, Darren, you're 09. You moved here in 09, right? That's right. And when did you move here, JJ? At the end of 07. 07. Yeah, that's OG. That's hardcore, man. Yeah, that's that's like a decade in Shire Town. Early Ron Paul. Decade in Shire. It, it really yeah, is. It yeah, is. At, yeah. le- at least. I mean, t- time moves here faster than it does out. You know, outside this little corner of the. Of the universe, like you, you leave here and you live your normal life. It feels like time goes by normal. You move here, for me, for the past year, I feel like I've lived like four years of my life. Yeah, that sounds, that's, that reminds me of my first year. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. now I'm used to this. So, See, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Do I, will it's I get intense. used to this? I've been here for a year. You get used it to still it. feels. No, like... you learn to deal with it. That's what happens. Okay. Or it drives you insane. And then you, <laughs> you probably will. Um, you just pick uh, the projects you're going to actually work on and work on those, and you won't do everything. Yeah, I've kind of toned down to yeah. just pretty much doing because this you show. can't, you can't yeah. do everything, so you'll no. eventually stop. No, yeah, I hear you. So. No, I, I get that, but at the same time, I still feel like time goes by, like you know, a week feels like a month worth of experiences. Sometimes, like it's just like and like and that. you mentioned uh, prior to the show how coming here changes people. 
you well, know and yeah. that's that's one of my things whenever right. i had a new mover and i talked to yes i remember this conversation i've probably given you. the conversation at, at least uh 200 times let's wow. say <laughs> wow yeah i had that conversation was like right before you moved yeah and i don't even recognize myself in the mirror uh since there you that go. happened yeah, yeah like this change. place has changed it changes you so much i think and you know that's that's one thing from you know the back in the days of keen you know when i was there the the whole idea of the peaceful evolution was something that i took you know very very much to heart and and it was the evolution within myself because I'm, I'm the place where all action human action begins with me as far as i'm concerned yeah right as far as my personal responsibility is concerned so I want to create good actions. I want to make sure I'm, I'm constantly putting out uh, positive actions and creative actions to overcome whatever destructive actions are, are, are being wrought by other people. Yeah. I mean, for me, I feel like here I can be who I want to be and do whatever I want to do. And as long as I'm, you know, not violating the nap, you know, no one's going to bat an eye at me. Well, there's, you know, you know there's also the nap is is a good guideline, and that's definitely a, a great you know baseline. But there's also not being a dick. Oh yeah, that's you know? no, don't get me wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, you still which, gotta be nice to people. Yeah, don't be yeah, a douchebag. Yeah, reputation's bag. everything. Yeah, yeah, no, reputation is your social currency. Sure. If you you soil that reputation, you have to build those. You literally have to build those bridges back. Right. Up. I mean, once mm -hmm. you're banned from Portfest, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I know. That's why. That's why we gotta be uh, protective of Anne. Like she can't. She's gotta. <sighs> she's that, gotta keep her chill. That before. is a strong social movement, and I've seen a lot of them since I've been here. Yeah, she can't. Yeah. She can't. Uh, I don't even know what it's about, guys. It's. I don't it, know. Well, you have to go check out Seditious Sirens. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Their yeah. episodes are coming uh, out tomorrow. Yeah, I think yeah, it's a gimmick. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a gimmick. No. no they oh no. <laughs> this is no gimmick. She needs a. We've actually discussed uh, yeah. whether or not she should even release the content. I don't, I don't think she should. I think she should, and I think wow. it, I think she's going to do it anyway. Yeah, there you yeah. go. That's all I'm going to say. They don't even believe. See, see. That's all I'm going to say. You you have been had, people. <laughs> you will listen. <laughs> you will listen to the next show with the seditious sirens. <laughs> It's near the end, right, of the show? Oh, right, no, it's right. Like it's after the yeah. third advertiser. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're listening to the Rebel Love Show. <laughs> We've got you right where we want you. <laughs> now, donate some Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, I'm using that. That's great. Right, you should. You definitely yeah, should. Yeah, send them all your doge. Yeah. <laughs> what What should they do, Darren? They should send Shire Dude all his doge. All your doge. Send... Shire do all your doge. If you got doge, send it to Shire do. If you don't have doge, yeah, get go rid out, of it. Because... Go out, buy some, and give it to Shire. Yeah, because yeah, doge is the cancer on this community. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Wait, Rob, what? It took over Pork Fest, man. I, I don't think that's I was possible. Boycotting. I don't think that's possible, it, sir. I think it's a slight exaggeration. There is a there is a YouTube video with um. Uh, with uh, Jeffrey know. Tucker talking Jeffrey Tucker's about in it. it. Vermin Supreme's Vermin in Supreme it. Vermin Supreme couldn't buy a goddamn hot dog. Because yeah, because because they didn't have any Dogecoin. Well, okay, then I guess he ate something else. Uh, apparently, maybe he was, he was priced out of the boot. market based on the currency accepted. Yeah, right. Doge, Doge took over, and hopefully that doesn't happen. So everyone just needs to get rid of their Doge. So I'm going to actually use Bitcoin. Bring all the Dogecoin users listening to this. I'm going to bring them to Port. Or all Doge three of Fest. them. Doge all Fest three of them. Is all those Dogecoin users in this room right now? <laughs> mm. No, I don't know. <laughs> I got like twenty thousand Dogecoin on my phone. Right oh now. wow! What wow. is that? Like fifty cents? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's like a few dollar. bucks. Yeah. Uh, okay, I was ha I was off by fifty cents. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a hundred percent. That's a large is, is that yeah. is that to the mood? Has that reached the mood pricing? No, uh, there's a good chance it might not because it's it's it should have has it done the last halving yet or no? Uh, I think it's within the next. Day or three. Yeah, I haven't been keeping so, up. So uh, yeah, well, yeah. and then been... after that, it's either going to sink or it's going to swim. Uh, um, uh, the only thing I t take out as um, like one thing that may change the what the Doge thing is hap what happens with that is uh, that there's going to be this. At least it was advertised. There's going to be like an online game engine that's called the Universe Engine, and uh, it's going to have like Doge integration, so you can play this game. Uh, like, like, kind of like a futuristic type game. I heard about that. Yeah. So, like, in, so, in app purchases, but yeah. only use Bitcoin. Only use Dogecoin. Or, I'm sorry, Dogecoin. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it's advertised as. I, I don't know. It, they don't say anything about Bitcoin or anything. It said just Doge. And I'm like, well, I mean, it, you know, you're gonna play a game. I think it would be fun to have Doge in it. And uh, 
I, I, could you now if you bought Doge through a could you buy it through the video game to get the I guess scene? I don't know. But if you did that, wouldn't that the uh, I would see game developers shying away from that, like selling it. Like they might point where you could go get some. Oh yeah, I wouldn't. I I don't think they yeah, would actually handle because I wouldn't it. want to uh, have all the paperwork things. Yeah, you know, you're just trying to get the game up and running. You don't need to be the gateway. Well, that's how. Wasn't that how? But you, you might be able to take ferns for you know services or something. Didn't you get into Bitcoin because of online gaming? Well, I I played a little bit of poker. I could play uh, penny poker with uh, Bitcoin, and uh, like I never played poker for money online. But then when I, when I learned, hey, I like alternative currencies. I like poker. Okay, I'll play poker in this. And the fact that it was I could play for such small amounts was really appealing to me. You, uh, most poker sites wouldn't let you play for you know very small amounts because that's no there's no profit in it. With Bitcoin, there's there's very low overhead, so they can they can let you do that. Actually, the first place I played and they didn't make a profit. So um, so I really liked playing the the small poker things. And and yeah, so the first time I bought Bitcoin, I didn't think it was going to go up as high as it did. I started to do the math and figure out how high it could go, but uh, you never know these things until it happens. When you guys see like retail, like accepting Bitcoin, like full retail, like major companies, I mean, we're already seeing other companies online like Wire, uh, Overstock and other places accept Bitcoin. When we're going to see like brick and mortar, besides like, you know, restaurants uh, and whatnot, but like, you know, a Best Buy or, you know, something like that taking Bitcoin. I think uh, you're already seeing a lot of that with the gift being able to buy gift cards um it's you know it sort of takes a while for for the the gears to move with some of these really large companies um just because they have so many outlets there is some overhead because they will have to change software and then provide training and you put that times 50 you know 5000 locations or 50000 locations worldwide and now all of a sudden that's a lot of change that needs to happen and and it, it might not be uh, you know, the incentive may, might not be there just yet. So, uh, you know, I think Bitcoin has has been a great learning tool. It's been an experiment in sort of a sort of a way, and it's a, a genius bit of code that's changed the world, and it's going to continue to change the world. Bitcoin might not be the the great currency that goes on to to be the one uh, used by free people everywhere, but it it will help, you know, pave that pave that 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 uh, pathway. So. Do you, you think know. do you think too many of us put too much faith in Bitcoin? I think yeah, I, I think it can get a little carried away the same way that uh, you know, sort of any any sort of fantasy like uh, thinking that this is the one way to solve all your problems. This is the one you know, th there's never one. You should always be hedging. You should always have a basket full of options and a basket full of ideas. Great advice. We have more on that. back to the rebel love show uh we're coming up to the top of the final hour here and before we go on further i really want to get into the whole the bromance between you guys how you guys came to be before the show even started <laughs> the bromance wait a minute yeah. now this is more poly partnership of yours <laughs> oh i don't know about oh, wait, that or, yeah, my, or my break or my taking you guys out of the closet i'm sorry no go, go forth your bromance oh, come on. well <laughs> i mean I'm, I'm confident in my sexuality and uh as you should be. As a straight straight dude, Darren is a wonderful man. He really is. He's a great it friend. Be platonic. That's right, I know. And he's, have a he's platonic trustworthy, one. he's loyal. It's not all about the sex. No. Uh, and, there's, yeah. yeah, there's there's none <laughs> so, of that. So there's no need for that. I mean I do, I mean I know JJ was on Free King, or you were on Free Talk Live for a while, right? That's right. And I um I, and I never really heard you that much in on Free Talk Live, honestly. Because after I moved here, I never really watched, listened to the show. I listened to the show before I moved, uh, so I might have heard you before I moved. And um, and then what else happened? Okay, and so, but the one thing I remember about your activism in Keene was that uh, you were on the local news. That's right. And uh, he was on the local news because he basically did everything right. 
as a responsible uh, gun owner and carry car- person carrying a, a firearm, uh, he you witnessed what was it a, a, a robbery? robbery. Uh, yeah, he witnessed knife robbery at a pharmacy, and he chased the robber. And um, did you get the license plate number? That's right. Okay, got the license plate number. Then a getaway vehicle waiting and, for him. And he had a he had a pistol, but he also chose not to use it, uh, which was probably the right thing to do because you don't want to shoot um, and have a ricochet or anything. Someone's uh, running away. It's yeah. generally not a good idea to shoot at him. Yeah. So, but uh, he got the license plate, and then they caught that robber. So, uh, so I I mean I think that was one of the best. Stories that possibly could have. I think it was one of the best stories. They call me a freestater. I was on WMUR, and the first, like five, first two seconds of the video, they go freestater, a gun carrying freestater, and another bystander help capture a burglary, a robbery suspect in downtown Keene, New Hampshire. Oh wow! And then like wow, I've never heard of this. And it showed Mm. me walking with my my. uh, I was carrying a Taurus, uh, forty five caliber, and uh, yeah. Yeah, so so that's so with all the crazy stuff happening in Keene, I'm not necessarily the, the most keen on the crazy stuff happening in Keene. Yes, uh, pun intended, I guess. Um, but to see that come out of with with JJ, I thought that was really uh, a great uh, PR type situation. And then JJ moved uh, to the club or moved to the to the to um, Manchester. Uh-huh. And then that's when I started to actually get know to get to know him kind of personally or more. I mean, it was, I saw you at events, but yeah, it, it was Antigone actually. Um, whenever she'd see Darren and I uh, hanging out, because we were very much positive type uh, attitude mindset type people, and so she she said we're too positive. We shouldn't sit like sit together and talk <laughs> together. Like we should have a podcast because this is too much. <laughs> and so we eventually did have a podcast. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, why? There's so much negativity, and there's so many people who want to just bring you down with their their BS and their drama story and whatever. I'd rather I'd rather ha- talk to someone, and I'd rather hear about what that went well, so that I can say positive things. You know, I want to hear about what you did successfully, so I can go, "Good job, great." Instead of hearing what went bad, so I can go, "Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I, that's so bad." I don't want to be like, I, "Now you're making me express this negative stuff and this this oh this sympathetic uh, sad sap stuff." No, I would rather be happy. And so if I could say something happy because you just said something happy, then everybody's, you know, better off. Yeah. I mean, for me, like since I got here, I've chilled out. I used to be a, uh, I used to be really angry at everything and everything going on in the world. And I got here, I, I, I don't know, I just kind of chilled out. I'm, I'm a more laid back, more happy guy. Um, yeah, I used to be like a completely different person moving here, but until I got here. You know, but I know that happens to a lot of people here. Um, but I don't really get too upset about other things. Um, anyways, uh, I had a question, though, before we hit the break. Uh, Darren's a partier. Am and, I? Am oh, I? yeah, yeah. You, you party, because when you do, you're shirtless. <laughs> That's uh, right. <laughs> and I want to know, what, what was the first time like for you? First time for, could you be more precise? Darren shirtless. Darren shirtless. Because that has to be something you remember. I was probably, you know, honestly, it was probably at a pork fest, and I didn't, I didn't, it was sort of like, in it, you know, if you've ever been to pork fest, there's a lot going on, and so, like, one sort of thing kind of, it's hard to focus because there's the Darren shirtless, and then there's a chick shirtless, and then there's other people shirtless, and it's just like, well, I mean, there's all kinds of people shirtless. What do you want me to say? You know, like, okay, Darren, I'm going to discriminate against you. <laughs> I was no, I mean it was a great experience because you know what he was happy that he no, was no, doing I'm what not, he wanted. I'm not he knocking wasn't you, man. Offended you be, I, I don't think it's a party like that uh, there. What I think until it's you're, uh, there should have been more shirtless people at the last pork fest. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. Not enough. Yeah, yeah. more, more well, shirtless. Was well, it, was it cold? <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't that cold. Uh, yeah, well, I mean that's that's a personal choice, and you know, when people are comfortable, they'll they'll make that choice, but. I think encouraging that sort of environment where people feel comfortable is is the first oh, yeah. step. Yeah. 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 No, I wouldn't. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't consider it a party if you're there, Darren. If you're not, uh, you're not shirtless. <laughs> oh goodness. It's 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 a it's a. And fun he's a good time. dancer too. Uh, yeah, you're a good. And I, a although good I've singer. never, although I've never <laughs> danced with him, I've seen him dance with many. Uh, Many ladies. Were you like that before you came to yeah, New Hampshire? I was the treasurer of the swing dance club in grad school, and so yeah, I learned it there. Oh, okay, all right. So. <laughs> you should you should start a free state dancing club. Yeah, well, uh, in my copious amount of time. So. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
Well, you're a jack of all trades. Yeah. You could, you you could get that done. Okay. Well, I've got I've got some other things I got to do <laughs> right tomorrow and everything. But. Well, what's on? What's going on in your world, man? What are you? What's so busy with your life? Well, I'm I'm, I'm working a lot, few jobs right now, I guess. So. Yeah. yeah. Do you do any Tinder activism? No, I do no <laughs> no Tinder activism. What about Snapchat activism? No. Are you on Snapchat? No, I don't do Snapchat. He does know. educational activism. Yeah, I just teach the kids, man. I brought a compass. You know, I, I seriously, I bought a, I bought these compasses, right? Uh-huh. You, you just make you draw circles with them, and it's ridiculous. I go into like the community college bookstore and I say, "Do you have compasses?" They're like, and they the, for five bucks you get two compasses and uh, and rulers and protract. I can't remember when it stuff being that cheap. Hmm. So I mean, I think it's all you know. It must be mass manufactured, or which is great. I like it. I like it cheap, and it's pretty good quality. And so I just had them set out, and then, then the seven year olds come by. They just immediately started picking up and drawing circles and things. I didn't have to really explain much. I I told them uh, how to bisect a, a segment and all that. Uh, they just looked at that. They didn't. Sometimes they'll actually copy what I do, but this uh-huh. time they didn't. But oh well. That's Sweet. All right. Well, we're coming up near the end here. So yeah. uh, where can uh, people find both of you guys at? Uh, NeilCashRadio.com. Uh, you can go there. Uh, JJ, where's your new venture? Uh, we're Vibrant Works. Vibrant.works. And, uh, but NeilCashRadio.com. We're also on Stitcher um, and iTunes. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, it's people, about time you guys got on iTunes. I know. iTunes, we need it. And it, that was, we definitely saw a boost from that. Otherwise, neocashradio.com blog for all that sort of stuff, and Twitter, we, Facebook. And we, yeah, and retweet all their things. And you're retweet. Also, you're also on the podcast rotation on uh, LRN. Yeah, we're, that's yeah, right. Yep, yep. So, yeah, we're, we're on LRN, so too. You're, you're everywhere. But we're not live. Now you just got to need to get on YouTube. Get that on going. Okay, well, we've had a few episodes on YouTube, but it's just... put every episode. There's cameras in the studio to record at. You just hit the record button. No. It's, no, not, no. That, it's, not, that, <laughs> it's not that hard. No. No. You I've know, been on TV. Other. That's all right. Yeah. Not, I mean, other the, than that... Yeah, you did thing. the Freak... The King freaky TV. TV. Yeah, yeah. You never know who's searching... You know, someone's searching uh, YouTube for Bitcoin, and they'll come across your show. You There's know? plenty of Bitcoin stuff there, and... It, that's the thing, you know, that we have a very specific target with what we're doing. You know what I'm saying? They're, they're very focused beam of light. Yeah. But it's audio. Wow. Yeah. I hear you. At least your audio is good on, like, some podcasts out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, we have a good studio. We do it in. And, yeah. Uh, it's, it yeah, now, now that JJ's away from Skype. Thank yes. God. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, I had a great I mean, vacation. It worked. It worked. Just, I uh, hate podcasts when they're on Skype. Well, like, I was... We, the, oh, I understand. You, know, yeah, I you had to. Studio, yeah, mm-hmm. you had to. Um, but if you're in the, the same area, get into the same studio. Oh, that's it, right. Being in studio is so much better than Skype. Yeah. Yes, it is. But uh, anyway, Shire Dude, where are you at on the on the ether known as the internet? Oh, you guys can find everything from me at ShireDude.com. Send them all your doge. What else are you working on? Definitely send me all your doge. All the doge. What am I working on right now? Yeah. Um, I got a really interesting video about polyamory coming out. What? Uh, yeah, over. it He's is become a polyactivist too now. It is a collaboration. Um, I filmed it, and what, I'm usually your videos don't have any overarching theme unless it's like ice cream. Yeah, it's not an episode of Shire, dude. Don't get me wrong. Okay. It's a collaboration with the artist formerly known as Objectivist Girl. I mean, oh girl. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, uh, you can find my content at vrebel.com. Find this show at rebelloveshow.com and uh, go download us on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, we're out. Peace. Peace.